<sighs> hey Google, dim the ceiling lights. Today I'm showing you how I solve the super annoying problem of automating my lights when I can't change out the light bulbs or the light switch. The solution was to make this roboticized light switch cover that goes on top of my dumb old light switch to make it a whole lot smarter. So let's start by taking a look at the mechanical design process I went through. So I made this real quick Arduino contraption just to test my servo if it's powerful enough to toggle the light switch. So let's see. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm guessing actually the servo is strong enough as long as it presses like closer to the pivot point. This length of servo horn is actually perfect, except that it's symmetrical on both sides. So I'm just going to snip off the side that I don't need. Take two. You know, this is actually just not strong enough. I'm going to grab another servo. Alright, so this servo right here is stronger. It has metal gears instead of nylon like the previous servo. So let's see how this goes. Uh, are you serious? It's like so close. So I have 3D printed this contraption just as a proof of concept where we have a pivot point for this lever and the uh, resistance arm is uh, half the length as the force arm doubling the force applied for the light switch. So based on this quick and dirty design I made a uh, larger and slightly beefier faceplate for the uh, light switch. And my plan for the final case uh, design is to have like a shell, a plastic shell I can 3D print which holds both the motors, lever and control electronics that I can just fit on top of my existing light switch. So although the servo was too weak to actually push the light switch earlier because of the double mechanical advantage of the fulcrum assembly it should really be strong enough. So let's test it on the actual light switch. It's the moment of truth. Oh, are you serious? Since the servo still wasn't strong enough to actually actuate and push the light switch, I wanted to try with this stepper motor that I had laying around. It should handle a lot more torque than the servo did. So I rigged it up on this Arduino so that if I turn the potentiometer, the motor starts to uh, turn as well. Let's go ahead and test this configuration. Oh, come on. Still not working. Kind of wonder how much force is, is needed to actuate. So I was very happy with this lever design. I felt it was a smart way to increase the force from the simple hobby servo. However, whatever I did, it just didn't increase the force enough to actually activate the light switch. So I caved and I ordered a bunch of uh, new motors, which gives me a lot of room to experiment and see what will work in the end. This one is rated up to 35 kilograms per centimeter, which is a lot more than 1.8 kilograms that I was using earlier. I also have another one rated for 20 kilograms. So I'm thinking I'm going to start with the smallest one and see if this will actually activate the light switch. Finally. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Now that we have a servo that can actually turn the lights on and off, we are going to fix the dimming function, which rotates the light switch. So I'm going to do some testing for that one. And then we can design an enclosure for all the electronics so we can mount it onto the switch here. 
So when a regular servo receives a PWM signal, it moves to a precise location, but the uh, continuous rotation servo, when it receives the same signal, it will move either forwards or backwards. So here I have the exact same sketch on the Arduino that control the other bigger servo to a precise location. Now we can change which direction it's going to move. as well as the speed. So I made this setup for debugging where I can test both the position of the pushing servo and the speed of the rotational servo. Okay, it seems like I got everything I needed. Now that I know all the main principles of this works, I can go over to designing the PCB and send it to production. While I wait for the circuit board to arrive, I can fine tune and polish the code and work on the integration with my smartphone. This video is brought to you by JLC PCB, where you can create your own custom PCBs for as little as $2. Upload your Gerber files today to get an instant price quote and start manufacturing. I didn't test the complete circuit on a breadboard before I designed the PCB as I was pretty sure everything would work. Now while writing the code I have uh, discovered a hardware bug that's gonna be a bit difficult to fix in software. Now while I turn the rotary encoder I want the value to keep increasing or decreasing. As you can see what happens is the value keeps toggling back and forth. It turns out one of the pins I used for the encoder, GPIO16, doesn't come with a built-in input pull-up resistor. I wish I knew this when I designed the PCB, but it just goes to show how you really should uh, test your complete circuit before you have it manufactured. I'm gonna have to botch this resistor onto the current PCB when it arrives. Now here's the PCB with most of the parts. I did add a MOSFET. The thought was to eliminate servo drift by shutting off the power to the two servos. Now I'm going to start by not using this MOSFET and just see if I might need it later on. If it is sufficient to just attach and detach the servos in code. The complete board is designed with uh, only SMD parts, except the power jack. To make the back side a bit more flush, I'm going to just snip off the legs. Now, for some reason, I couldn't upload any programs through the FTDI headers. So the problem might either be with something I have soldered or a design error in the circuit itself. So on the circuit board, I made three distinct sections. So in the middle here, I have only the circuitry necessary for supporting the ESP and programming it. So to hunt for the error, I'm going to solder a new circuit one area at a time. So I'm starting with the middle ESP area. The sketch uploaded just fine and the built-in LED started to blink. I'm going to continue soldering the other parts. The error from the first PCB just never showed up on the second PCB that I soldered. I'm assuming it was some uh, bad solder connections causing a short somewhere. Here's the newest PCB connected to the two servo motors. As you can see, the servo turns on and off just like I wanted to. 
and I can also adjust the brightness by turning the rotary encoder. The microcontroller communicates with my home automation server over MQTT where it shows up just like any other smart light you could buy. This means I can control it through my phone and computer and tablet and everything through Home Assistant. And I can also use any smart speakers. Check this out. Hey Google, turn off the ceiling lights. Now this is really exciting because there are three parts in this project. We have the electronics and the circuit board, which now are finished and works perfectly fine. We have the programming or the code, which also runs perfectly on the microcontroller circuit. And then the final piece is the mechanical design and the 3D printing. There I've already done a lot of work and now it's more of a fine tuning and final assembly before it can go onto the light switch itself. For this main gear that's going to both get pushed and rotate, I added some tension pegs that will hold onto the peg inside of the light dimmer. To keep them gripping tight over time, I'm adding some copper wire I coiled that will act as a spring. The PCB is designed to be kept in place by sliding into a small slot. The smallest dimming gear is screwed onto the rotating servo before both motors are fastened with screws onto the mounting plate. I'm going to mount this whole assembly onto the light dimmer by using double sided tape. So we're back where it all began. Now let's see if this complete assembly can finally do the job. All the parts I've been developing works exactly the way I want it to, which is a great feeling. I could stop at this point and just be done with the project, but because this light switch is in my living room, I want it to look a little bit nicer. So I'm 3D printing some white cases to go over the motors and the circuit board. I'm fastening these with double sided tape on top of all of the components, just to tie the look together. Now the final piece on the build. So there it is, finally a way to integrate my old and boring ceiling lights with the rest of my home automation setup. As always, if you want to recreate this project, I have written detailed build instruction you can find in the video description, as well as all the files I developed for this project.